Uh, welcome to the webinar, a deep insight into adhesive application for digital dentistry. Nice to have you here. Uh, my name is Michel Petitjean and I'm the moderator during this webinar. The speaker of today is Dr. Walter Diaz. Dr. Walter Diaz is a prostodontist with focus on adhesive and composite artistry. Originally from Brazil, having lived and worked nine years in the, in the USA, where he received his Master's of Science in Operative Dentistry at the University of North Carolina and vast clinical experience. Currently, he lives in the beautiful city of Konstanz in Germany, situated at the beautiful Bodensee. For clinical, clinical questions or in case uh, you experience technical issues, you can write them down in the Q&A on the bottom of your, of your screen. For now, we wish you a learnful experience and we give the stage to Dr. Walter Diaz. Thank you. After that, I'm also curious to, to meet the, the presenter. <laughs> no, no, that was very nice words. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Michelle. Thank you for the dance play team for putting this together. Uh, we're going to have a very lively discussion here today about uh, digital, the application of adhesives um, in a media dentinal ceiling for digital applications. And I'm really excited with this topic because uh, the application of digital dentistry is becoming more common, more popular, more easier, more accessible. And this is something we should consider about. Uh, the first spoiler is that adhesive dentistry is adhesive dentistry. Uh, you need to make, to do a good application of the adhesive. Uh, so this is, one of the things we're going to be talking about. This is also applicable to anything uh, from direct composites to post cementation, but the, uh, the, his, the technique is very similar. What's going to change it is if you're going to do a dual cure approach or uh, a light cure approach, we're going to briefly discuss these things. I want to focus on the application of the immediate dentinal sealing for digital dentistry. So before you prep, you're going to seal the dent and, and uh, it's going to be very, I'm very excited yeah, to, to do these things. You know, the digital dentistry came, came a long ways and um, uh, we can solve relatively complicated problems today in uh, one session with indirects uh, or a combination of directs and indirects. Uh, composites are much better um, in terms of cementation, in terms of core buildup. Also, if you'd like to do indirect with composites or with ceramics, I think the performance of composites in the posterior segments for onlays and overlays rivals that of ceramics. Uh, we can talk about the data later, but there, there are a lot of clinical trials showing a very good performance for, also for composites. Uh, onlays and inlays in the posterior segment. Um, the, the adaptation is amazing. Uh, the shade blending is also good, but I think the important thing is when we do uh, indirect case is to make sure we have a good seal. So let me, let me start talking about uh, the adhesives that uh, I want us to focus. And what I want, I want us to focus actually is on the new generation of adhesives that we call um, we call the uh, universal adhesives, okay? So let me borrow from a, an expression um, that I got from my kids. Now, you, you're so five minutes ago, uh, meaning, you know, you're kind of out of date. So I think the old three bottle systems are kind of, five minutes ago. I think there's a new generation of adhesives that are much more robust, much more versatile, and these are the universal adhesives. I, I use the universal adhesive all across my practice and my restorations for direct, indirect post cementation. I think it, it, these adhesives are unprecedented in terms of the technology. Let me give you a few examples. Um, the universal adhesive from Densply, for instance, it does not contain HEMA anymore. So HEMA is the hydroxyethyl metacrylate. It's a, an old 
hydrophilic monomer that 99% of the adhesive, adhesives have, like scotch bone multipurpose, for instance, and, and all other adhesives of, of uh, the last, last um, decade, they would contain HEMA. And HEMA is associated with uh, bone strength deg degradation with time. So the bone strength diminishes. And another example is the some universal adhesives, they contain MDP. And MDP is the acidic monomer uh, from Clearfield, from Panavia. It's a um, well-recognized rec um, acidic, acidic monomer that works really well. I'll show you some pictures later on of uh, scanning electron microscopy, but the use of universal adhesives today for me is a no-brainer, but there is one catch, yeah? There's one catch. You see here, I, I think you can see here, uh, let me see if I can, uh, yeah. You can see here on the screen, the, the third bottle of the three bottle adhesive system. So this bottle is pretty much a thick resin composite. It's almost like a flowable. In some cases, it is a flowable. If you use op Optibond, Optibond, the third bottle, the third bottle is uh, almost, it is 37% filled. So it is a flowable composite. So it's kind of you're cheating, you know, you're applying an old adhesive system with HEMA, uh, with, bis, bis, with bisphenol A, for instance, which, which uh, perenbone active doesn't contain. And then you seal it, you seal it with a uh, sort of flowable composite. Yeah. So this actually protects the adhesive. So th there, this is all, of course, in advantages, very advantageous, yeah. And what I'm trying to say is that when we use an adhesive, I think we should always seal this adhesive with some time, some type of thick resin composite. Yeah? So in, in a short, in, in summary, what I'm saying is that after the adhesive application, I don't think we should apply the composite directly. First, we should seal it either with a flowable or with a low shrinkage composite. So let me give you let me give you uh, an example here. Yeah, let me give you an example. All right, now I have to uh, delete a uh, clear here. You go clear all drawings. Uh, So let me give you um, an example. And this is a very nice indirect case uh, that I did. And in this case, after we did the endodontic treatment, okay, we had a lot of dentin exposed. We decided to do a uh, with the aid of digital dentistry and uh, indirect only. So before we start building this up with composite, what we did is we applied uh, the adhesive. I generally etch all the enamel and the sclerotic dentin. So if you want a very easy recipe for, uh, for etching pattern, yeah? I would say the selective etching is the way to go. And what do I etch? I etch, I pre-etch with the phosphoric acid, the enamel and sclerotic dentin, okay? Or hypermineralized dentin as well. So these have to be roughened with the diamond burr or, or aluminum oxide. And then they, ha they have to be etched uh, together with the enamel. Um, and then the application of the adhesive. And now before we start laying the core buildup, yeah, what we do is we make an application of STR. So this is what you're seeing here is the application of STR. And then we can even prep this a little bit if we want. So this is the catch. When we want, uh, when we use an adhesive, we should also always seal it beforehand. Um, to make sure that when we apply the composite, the adhesive is going to be it's going to be protected. Okay, uh, let me just show you here very quickly the well. We'll come back to the cementation later, right? Uh, let 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 me talk about the dentinal seal. But this was cemented uh, using a using a very interesting technique with a warm composite. I want to talk about that as well. 
um, this was a very interesting case. But before we go there, let me sh let me show you another case where we also did a, a, a seal with SDR before we place the composite. So this is another case that is very interesting. This is a more simple case. Where after the composite, um, the removal of the old composite, you have a, a plethora of different tissues and situations that we have to deal with. So this is where the selective etching is really important for digital dentistry uh, because we want to etch everything that is not sound, uh, sound normal dentin. So let's say sclerotic dentin, let's say hypermineralized dentin and things like that. Um, you, you, you're going to etch those strange dentists that are very disorganized tissues to, to increase the bone strength. So in this case here, what we did is we're going to roughen all this uh, sclerotic dentin. We're going to finish the enamel all around, and we're going to etch these areas, but the sound dentin doesn't need to be etched, okay? Uh, so here you see more or less the situation of the preparation, okay? And here, what you see on the left is what you really need for adhesive dentistry is a well finished margins with all the dentin already sealed. So, how did we seal this dentin here in this case? We sealed it with an application of a SDR. Yeah. So, SDR is a bulk fill composite from Dentspline. Uh, you could use a flowable composite as well for this, but SDR gives you a little more flexibility in terms of the layer thickness. Yeah. So it's a very interesting product. I'm going to talk about more about it later. So on, a, on an ideal world, this is what you really should have available for make, scanning your, your indirect uh, restoration. You should have a well-finished margins. And of course, don't forget that if you, if you have to pro, uh, provisionalize this, you will need to sandblast the internal area uh, of the preparation after you remove the provisional, or you can embrace uh, digital dentistry and simply do chair side, you know? So you prep, you seal the dent and you prep again, you scan it, you mill it and cement it. Yeah. Very well. This is a uh, chair side and we use here uh, dense like the Tessera, Tessera blocks. There we are, very nice results. I, I did glaze it, but we can, I, uh, you can also polish it if you want, but I prefer to glaze it, it's very simple. Very well, this is, uh, I, I'll give you another example. Uh, this is an uh, example of for uh, endorestal. Uh, this one here is, is a uh, direct case, but the principle is uh, the same. And I really want you to embrace this, this, idea of sealing the dentin because then we can actually um, apply it whenever we're using adhesive dentistry, you know, either for direct or indirect. So in this case, we have the case ready to go. Uh, we have the, this is direct, okay, but I'm going to show you the application of the immediate dentinal sealing on this case before the composite is applied. So what we did here is we made a good adaptation using a Pelodent um, matrix system. And then after the application of the adhesive, after the application of the adhesive and light curing the adhesive, we seal the dentin with a layer of SDR. This is direct, so that's why we applied a little more on the proximal box, but you could apply, apply a little less yeah, and have a thinner layer. But this is the idea. Um, of then um, of immediate dentin dentinal sealing, you're going to seal the whole dentin before you apply the composite, before you do or you do even your preparation. Because now, let's say if this were uh, an indirect case, you would then prepare this and scan. So that's you know, it. yes. Hello. So if, uh, by the way, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please let me know. Yeah. This is the final case, although this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, direct. So let me just 
drive the point a little bit um, of the ideal uh, and, and why is it that we want this immediate dentinal sealing, yeah? And then I'll show you a couple of cases and I'll do some live demonstrations, yeah. So this is a case here where we did uh, the endo and then we seal, we sealed the, the dentin, okay? Just one second. Yeah. This bar here, it keeps keeps coming on the same area and it's getting in the way when I want to replay. <laughs> anyway, so what you see here is then an endorestal case where we did the uh, medial dentinal sealing, preparation scanning, and then after the, the cementation. Okay, this was, yeah, after the cementation, what I'm going to show you here now is a transillumination of the tooth. So we're uh, applying light to the lingual side of the tooth, and you're seeing the light go through the tooth, showing you a monoblock effect. So when we are cementing uh, a restoration, what we want to have is this seamless, seamless integration between the tooth and the restor and the cement and the restoration. So there are no dark gaps or no lines or imperfection. So what you have, you really restore the, the functional integration of the tooth. In order to accomplish this, of course, I told you, you should always seal the dentin yeah, whenever you have the space, especially for posterior overlays and, and onlays and um, even, even crowns, you can seal this very easily. Yeah. For anterior, sometimes we don't have enough space and maybe you can seal it uh, only with the, the adhesive and, and then a bond. Yeah, but especially for the posterior or large cavities, you can seal it. But now we have to talk a little bit about the adhesive application. So I think now I would like to get into the nuts and crannies of the of the direct bone strength of the uh, adhesive dentistry. Um, yeah. Okay, and how to obtain the perfect uh, bone strength or the, the optimal bone strength. Let's put it this way. So typically we used to talk about 25 megapascal. This is the uh, the force per area that we, we have when we apply the adhesive. Today with the more modern adhesives, we are already reaching up to 35 megapascal. Um, this is equivalent of almost uh, 3,500 uh, kilos in one square centimeter. So imagine a small little square centimeter and you can have 3,000 kilos held by the adhesive yeah, that gives you 35 megapascal. This is a very interesting uh, and very powerful technology that we have in our hands today. As, as, as I said, the adhesion to the dentin is not extremely, it's not 100% stable. You will have some degradation with time. Yeah, so sorry, some degradation with time. The bone strength to dentin is going to degrade, is going to uh, decrease. But the question is, if we achieve the highest bone strength, yeah, um, is this still going to be functional uh, after 10 years? And the answer is yes. Uh, we tend to lose around, I would say, 30% of the bone strength after, after uh, seven years in water storage studies. But now we see that with these new adhesives that I mentioned to you, adhesives that are that don't contain HEMA, that have MDP, um, like a primary bone active from Densply, you know? These adhesives are showing a tendency of have less degradation, yeah? It's very hard to ascertain exactly what this degradation is because it's a long-term study, but we know that today we're below 70% of, um, we are below seven, uh, above 70% of bone strength retain, retention. Yeah? We're ret retaining more than 70% after 10 years in very extensive water storage in vitro studies. Yeah? Uh, very well. So how do we achieve this in our practice? First, you should always be applying your adhesive to fresh dentin. So what you see here are uh, saturated resin tags um, with a cross section. These are, is my work. Uh, that I did during my thesis. And what I did is I removed the dentin from the side also so you can look at the resin tags, 
So it's a cross section that I etched from the side and you can see a, a, a seamless penetration uh, of these resin tags by the adhesive. You can see that these adhesives can penetrate very, very deep into the dent. And so actually this adhesive here that I'm showing you is uh, premium bond active. You can see that I actually, I etched the dentin in this case because it's universal. I was checking for both uh, etching modes. Yeah, so in this case, I etched the dentin and you can see how huge it is. The, let me see if I can do an annotation here. Yeah, how huge it is the, the entrance of, of the dentinal tubule, it, it makes like a, a pyramidal format. And what we call here is intratubular hybrid layer. Yeah? So the adhesive not only etched the hybrid layer, which you can see, let me see where I'm, which you can see in this area here, right? This area is the hybrid layer, but you also have this, um, this intratubular, yeah, intratubular hybrid layer caused, and this is a, a, a clear characteristic of total etch or etch and rinse adhesives. Yeah? That's why when I say, if you etch the dentin, so now you create a lot of space and you have to apply more adhesive. If we, um, let me clear this. All right, now, another thing we have also to consider is the depth of, the, of this dentin that we're uh, working with. Let me just see if I can hear this, yeah, okay. Another thing we have to consider is the depth of the dentin that we're, we're working with, okay? So if you look at this case here, this is a case where you have the dentin at one millimeter from the DJ. This case has a lot of intertubular dentin. It's very easy to work with, yeah? Um, but if you etch this, especially if it's mid-dentin, then you have a completely different scenario. It's a completely different ballgame. And what you see here is a case where you have much less intertubular dentin yeah, and also etched. And that's why uh, today we're really trying to avoid etching sound dentin because when you etch the dentin like this, now you have to saturate all the surface area with the adhesive. You have to wait much more time. It's much longer, the drying time. And also you have a less quality because you have less intertubular dentin. Yeah? So dentin in between the tubules, which is where most of the adhesion comes from. So it's a lose-lose situation. Yeah? And that's why to the, today we're actually rec recommending that we use a self-etching adhesive. So let me show you here. I showed you this. This is prime bone active in total etch mode. Let me show you how it looks like in self-etch mode. You, you have a much more conservative etching of the inside the tubule, you have a much thinner hybrid layer, which is easier to achieve because it's easier to saturate with adhesive. And the bone strength is equivalent in an optimal scenario, but this, this type of bone strength is much easier and more predictable to obtain. So that's why we're trying to uh, always go for self-etching. Uh, on, on sound the dentin, yeah. On enamel, I still like to etch the dentin, uh, especially because enamel is so brittle, yeah. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, let, let's go on, on enamel and talk a little bit about enamel.
uh, the enamel is um, a little brittle. So sometimes what, what you have when we are on, on the enamel surface is that you can have a fracture and these white lines, you know? So if you never, uh, if you have never seen a white line, I'll show you one so you can understand more or less how it works. So here, what you see is the interface of the adhesive bonded to the composite on the right and the enamel and the enamel rods on the left. Yeah, this is a seamless transition between the enamel and the cement. Um, but what you can have sometimes is due to the morphology of this enamel, yeah, all this is enamel, depending on, on the angle, you can have these white lines. Let me show you here a case where you see these white lines. And these white lines, actually what they are, um, here I show you another case. Yeah, right there. You can see these fracture lines. Yeah, fracture lines here and some white lines over here. These white lines are nothing more, not, nothing less than the, than the cohesive fracture of the enamel. So look at this case. This is a, a tooth, an extracted tooth that I did some research with. And on this area over here, on the upper left interface between the composite and the enamel, there, I, I kind of, I managed to create a white line because I bulk filled and then I applied high speed burst to this area. And so if we magnify into this area, yeah, so it's, I go back here and I show it right here, right here. If we magnify, we see here the composite, we see the adhesive, uh, you, we see the enamel rods. And what you see here is the cohesive fracture within the enamel rods that were displaced by the adhesive. Okay, so that's why I think we should always finish the margins uh, in slow speed when we're preparing. If you have a one of those uh, multiplier contraangles, those contraangles with the red ring, you know, uh, red coded, these are uh, they multiply the acceleration for four to five times. So you can easily decrease the velocity. This the the burst speed, yeah? And use a fine diamond because it has a high torque to finish this enamel margin. So this is very important too, to avoid uh, these white lines. Yeah? And here you can see another one. Very well. So one of, so one of the solutions is the uh, adhesive application. You know, I think we have to do a very nice application, but we should not forget that we, we need to have a, a good light. Let me see if I, for the adhesive application, we need to use a good uh, curing light. And I think it's important to know that what is the concept that what, what makes a good light, uh, a good light. Yeah? Um, the first thing is our light should have collimated lenses. Yeah? So the lens of the light, of the curing light is collimated and round. So it focused the light. The second thing is this light should have more than a thousand milliwatts of power per square centimeter to allow us to have a very deep uh, penetration to, into the restoration and the cement. Yeah. And thirdly, this light should be, uh, should be reliable. Yeah? You see here the old lights, uh, you never knew what type of power source this is working. And sometimes you would check on these lights, they would have like 300 milliwatts of power per square centimeter. Yeah? This is the Demetron, also old lights. This one uses a halogen light. Yeah? But these new lights that are LED based are very reliable. So I think a good light is a light that, that doesn't have this out of focus beam. It's more a focused, um, a focused application because of these collimated lenses. Yeah. And also that can reach up to eight millimeters in depth and still deliver around 800 milliwatts per square centimeter, okay? So in summary now, 
a good light is a light with collimated lenses that focus the light beam, being able to deliver around 800 milliwatts of power per square centimeter at a distance of more or less eight millimeter. So we can cure the adhesive at, at the pulp chamber, for instance, or in a, in a deep subgingival preparation and things like that, okay? Very well, so things like that. Um, okay, now the adhesive application. Uh, I'm gonna do a demonstration shortly for you guys. I'm gonna start the presentation uh, very shortly now where we, I'm gonna show you the adhesive application. I'm gonna show you the uh, the immediate dentinal sealing and a few uh, tips and tricks for this um, this approach uh, in adhesive dentistry and uh, digital adhesive dentistry. But I want to call attention here for something that you will find in any instructions for use of adhesives. Uh, and that is the amount of time you should leave the adhesive on the tooth surface. Okay. So if we follow these instructions for use of, it doesn't matter which adhesive, this is just, just an example. Yeah? Um, you, should, um, you should etch um, the, the tooth for a maximum of 15 seconds. But wait a minute, you know, uh, what you're doing is you're etching the dentin, you're etching the, sorry, the enamel, you're etching the sclerotic dentin in the hypermineralized dentin, yeah? And what, what they mean here is that you should, um, what you should do, yeah, is you should start etching the enamel margins and the sclerotic dentin and the hypermineralized dentin later. So the enamel is at least etched 15 seconds. So what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to etch the enamel. You should instead of under etching, always over etch it more than 15 seconds. And the only limit really is don't, don't etch it more than one minute because then you start losing some bone strength because of cre the creation of uh, mineral uh, hypotype uh, calcium salts. Yeah? And so start etching the enamel, make sure you have a good spread. Then you extend the acid into the um, sclerotic dentin or hyper, hyper mineralized dentin, and you don't need to extend it to the sound dentin. Yeah? Then you're gonna rinse this copiously. You're gonna dry it without a dice, uh, uh, without a, let it dry, over dry it too much. Yeah? Then we're gonna applica, ap apply the adhesive and leave it undisturbed for 20 seconds, yeah? And especially, especially in the etched areas, but in the unetched areas, you could etch, even uh, massage it a little bit. But what I want to, sh to sh tell you here, what I really want to call attention to is that we should observe this 20 seconds. So if you didn't know this, so here is a great, um, tip for you, you know, if you really want to do a great digital uh, adhesive application for digital dentistry, what you need is to make sure you, you respect this 20 seconds that the adhesive needs to penetrate into the dentin. Okay, this is really important. And this is what I'm going to be uh, demonstrating to, to you guys that during the application of the emitted dentinal ceiling. And uh, after that, I'm going to uh, show a little bit, uh, give you a few examples of cementation and go through some clinical cases. Yeah. So let me just get ready here and I'm going to get my model and uh, do a, a demonstration of the adhesive uh, application. Also, some tips and tricks with opacifiers and, uh, and tints if you're if you have a very dark area in your tooth restoration. Uh, with that said, I would like to invite you to um, ask me questions. Uh, we're open for questions if you have any doubts or anything, but I'm gonna prepare my model here and we'll be back with you in one minute. Let me just get it, get ready. There are no questions for the time being, uh, no Walter. For the time being. No problem, <laughs> give me just one second.
All right. So I'm gonna now switch to the microscope, okay? All right, so this is a case um, where we want to seal the dentin, uh, or let's actually, I'm, I want to do a simulation of a case where, let's say we have to do a, a core buildup. And then after that, we're going to do a preparation for, let's say, an only with cusp covering and everything. So let me just simulate here. Um, the loss of some dentin surface. Okay. And so now we, we need to rebuild this and... Um, and do immediate dentinal sealing at the same time. Okay, first thing I wanna check with you guys if it's in focus. Yeah, it is. It is, excellent. All right. So the idea is um, we're gonna seal all this and then we're gonna reprep this for this, for this scanning or the impression. Um, we're, here we're giving emphasis to digital dentistry, so for the scanning, but if you're still, if you didn't, if you still didn't jump in the wagon, uh, you, you can also do this for regular uh, dentistry, right? So the first thing is we're going to get our adhesive. I'm going to use the universal adhesive. So again, this is prime bond active. This is the best adhesive of Densply by far, by far. And what's uh, going on here is this adhesive uh, does not cont contain HEMA, which is an old hydrophilic monomer that was used on the vast majority of adhesives. Yeah? This adhesive also has some, uh, uh, some self-leveling, so it's very easy to apply. And I want to show you a, like an, an innovative way to apply the adhesive, okay? Um, in our case here, what we're going to do is we're going to apply, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply in self-etching mode, okay? But if you want to apply in the selective uh, etching mode, then what you need to do in this case is you're going to etch all the enamel yeah, for more than 15 seconds. Generally, I like to go to 25, 30 seconds. Then you're going to rinse dry and apply the adhesive, but you need to activate the adhesive and massage it a little bit on the non-etched area, okay? After that, we're going to worry about getting it very thin and uniform, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks so you don't need to apply several layers, just, just one layer of adhesive. Right, we can isolate this uh, if you want. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep going eh, for the sake of demonstration. So first things, then this is etched, rinsed. Uh, generally, what I like to do is I, I dry it around, and then I remove all the excess of water from the tooth, but without desiccating too much. Okay, then. 
we're going to apply the adhesive. Let's see, we still have some droplets that have left. Okay. We're going to apply the adhesive um, in the center like this, and then spread all around the margins. Okay. Let me put the filter so we don't. Okay. And now, since I have the adhesive all around, always go beyond the preparation, yeah, at least one, two millimeters. Now we need to massage the dentin and respect those 20 seconds, okay? So now the adhesive is acting. You notice that I applied with a little excess the adhesive, yeah? But we should avoid pulling. And we are, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the excess of adhesive. I think now it's in focus, right? Yeah. We, we're going to remove the excess of adhesive with the same micro brush after drying it a little bit. Why is it that I do this? Because, you know, if you apply just the right amount of adhesive, what I noticed is that in most cases, like in, in many cases where you have large surface area, sometimes you have to reapply because it looks dull. It looks like there's uh, we're missing adhesive. Let me just change the, the white balance. Oh, that's not the one. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, with the filter, this is the best I can do here, this one, okay? No, I'm not even sure if this is better. If not, let me know. I'll, I'll go back to the other filter. This is because of the yellow filter, so it doesn't cure the adhesive, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the, the same uh, microbrush. Of course, we you can use a, a new microbrush if you want. Make sure it's dry. So this is dry, yeah? And now what, what we're going to do we're going to come here with the micro brush and make sure we remove any pulling or excess of adhesive. And this works pretty well. Look, you can see it here. There was a little, little excess of adhesive right there. Yeah. So now, only after removing the excess, only after removing the excess, we can dry this adhesive. And this is the sing singularly largest responsible for insufficient adhesion when uh, applying um, a universal adhesive, uh, adhesive like this. Because every universal adhesive contains water. It has to, because it's also self-etching. So you need to dry this properly. If we look at the instructions, there you go. It calls for five seconds. And what I see dentists all over the world doing is generally go and they do like a little more. But that's less than that's less than two seconds. Yeah. And so the adhesive is not going to cure properly because the solvent is not evaporated. And this is going to cause a huge problem for, uh, for the long-term sur survival rate of this restoration. Yeah? So again. Um, let me repeat this. What you need to do is we need to apply the adhesive. Let's say you see an area where the adhesive is not properly placed. Here it is. But if you see, uh, let's do the, the premolar here. If you see like a deep area, what you're going to do is apply the adhesive in excess, always in excess. Yeah. Then spread it around on the enamel. Then you ma massage the unetched area, respecting those 20 seconds. All right. And after that, we're gonna remove this excess. And I wanna, I wanna repeat this one more time. Um, 
the reason that I apply with a little excess is that most of the time I can have a full control of the adhesive quantity and I don't have to reapply the adhesive, yeah? Because the adhesive fully saturates the template. What you need to do is before you air dry, you get a new micro brush or a paper point and you dry it, you dry it. And then you come here and you remove all the excess, the adhesive excess. So in, in this case, I'm going to get a, a new micro brush. Okay, remove the excess. Make sure you have this very uniform coating of the adhesive without any excess. And only now I'm going to, um, sorry, don't cure it yet. <laughs> don't cure it. Only now I'm going to uh, dry it from a distance very gently. Okay. This is how we should do it. I was talking to some um, high-end adhesive researchers, uh, especially uh, here in Europe. We have a bunch of them. They're really preeminent. Yeah? And they were telling me, um, I think the adhesive should ideally be dried for 10 seconds. But I was telling them, I don't think this is realistic. I, I cannot imagine general practitioners adopting such a long drying time. I mean, let, let me show you how much five seconds is. Yeah, let's, let's go. Five seconds is. That's five seconds. It's a long time, you know. Um, but if you stick to this, to the minimal requirement yeah, to the minimal required and you try to lightly dry the adhesive for five seconds the quality of your adhesive technique is gonna improve exponentially so uh, this is a great tip that i'm giving now we need to light cure this we're gonna use a very very good light this is uh this one here is the smart light pro this is the new light from uh from Densply. It has four blue LEDs. This this thing is a beast. It has the collimated lenses that I told you, right? Uh, and this thing is so powerful that actually uh, Densply had to to change to chip it to chip it and decrease the output yeah? uh, by via 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 software because this was burning teeth. You know, uh, it, it can easily reach into the uh, 1,500, 1,200 milliwatts, milliwatts per square centimeter. And it will certainly give us that 800 milliwatts um, at the eight millimeter distance that I talked about, okay? So now the adhesive being properly placed, properly dried, we're gonna light cure this. I wanna give you another tip because another problem in adhesive dentistry in digital adhesive dentistry mm -hmm. is that actually people don't really place the light stay in a stable manner that it actually light cures the tooth. What they do is they hover, they hover around the tooth like this. And then sometimes they land on the right spot, but then some somebody comes and say, hello, they say, hello, how are you? You know, and you're curing the wrong tooth. Yeah. Um, so let me show you this again, because generally they do it like this and this way. And they start curing here and then somebody comes, hey, hello, Dr. Diaz, say, hello, how are you? And then I go on the wrong tooth, you know, <laughs> and I cure the wrong tooth. This happens a lot. Um, that's why one of the reasons why I love these silicone uh, protection covers, because they not only protect you from from the, the, the blue light very well, you know, but it also helps you get in touch with the tooth. All right. Get in touch here with, with the tooth that intended, uh, intending to, to like here. And, and it's kind of stable, yeah? So the idea is you're gonna get closer to the tooth you wanna cure, you're gonna start curing. And then after a couple of seconds, you land, you can land on, on the tooth. And the curing time now, it's very nice surprise. 
only 10 seconds. That's the curing time recommended by Densply for this adhesive, but only if you have a good light. If you're not sure about your light uh, quality and output, then I would recommend you stick to uh, you stick to the 20, 20 seconds, the, the usual 20 seconds, very well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna seal all the dentin before we perform the, the, the preparation. Yeah? And in this case, um, you can also use matrices, but because I'm gonna prepare the tooth, I'm not so worried about. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use SDR, let me find my SDR here. Yes. So SDR is a bulk fill material from, um, from Densply. is the pioneer that created, that actually created this category of bulk fill. It has very, it has very, very low uh, shrinkage stress. Uh, it comes in different shades. I think I have a few other shades here. Yeah, I have at least one. So this is A1. The difference is if, if you use the shaded one, um, if you use in thicker than two millimeters, then you need to cure it for 40 seconds. Yeah? But if you cure, if you use this one lower in the layer thickness, smaller than two millimeters, or if you use the universal, yeah, up to four millimeters, then the curing time is only 20 seconds, only 20 seconds. So let me use the A1 because I'm gonna use a very thin layer, yeah, because we're gonna seal the dentin. <coughs> we're gonna seal the dentin yeah, um, before we prep the tooth. So what we're gonna do here, what I like to do first is I got, I get, I go on the most difficult margins, yeah, and I apply a very thin layer of SDR like this. And if you have any problems, you can get, get a, a thin instrument like this one and bring SDR to the margins that you, you wanna seal, okay? You, at this point, you can tech cure. If you think that the material is gonna flow, you can simply tech cure it for uh, two seconds, yeah? Uh, but I'm just going to continue a little bit. This is a kind of a thin layer. And now with a very gentle uh, motion using a micro brush, you can pull SDR towards the margins. Okay, like this. And this is where this material is magical because you cannot do this with the flowable man. And then at this point, I think I'm getting very good results. I think I'm gonna tech cure this. So you tech cure. And then what you do is uh, we're gonna check it out, see if you need a little more. Oops, let me raise this. See? So here you can have, it's a perfect seal of all the vestibular all the uh, popo floor. Here, I think I could add a little more, okay? So you would add this. Let me show you in direct vision. Then just drag it towards the tube. My friends, if you do this before you prep. You're out of focus, Walter. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. If you do this, is this better? Okay. Um, if you do this before you prep and you leave the dentin sealed, you will never, ever, ever again have sensitivity because of the cementation. Okay. You may have sensitivity for other things because let's say you didn't follow my advice and you left the adhesive undried or the solvent and you didn't evaporate the solvent yeah then you can have some sensitivity or you didn't apply enough adhesive you can then you can have sensitivity and things like that but if you do it like this then what's going to happen is oh thank you water for me thank you 
So I got some water here because my throat is getting dry. And um, so you will just never have sensitivity again. So what's the what's the plan now? Let me make this table here on the table. So the plan now, it's going to prep. This, I'm going to prep just a little bit. I don't want to talk too much about prepping. That's not the, the goal of our, of our uh, webinar today. We can certainly uh, do one about preps for veneers, maybe. I don't know. Just talk to Michelle. Um, but, okay, let me, let me just show you uh, what we're going to do about with preparation. Generally, I like to use this sequence of, let me... Um, show you the sequence of burrs. So what, you, what are the burrs that you should use for digital dentistry, in my opinion? It's a sequence of burrs where you have a conical or um, what's the, the description? A convergent. So tapered. Yeah, that's the word I want. So it's a tapered um, profile with a round edge. And what I have here is, this is, this is 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.2 diameter at the tip. Yeah. And then what I have is I have the medium grit version of these bars and the fine grit version, version of these bars. Yeah. Um, if you want, I can show you one uh, brand that I use, but there are many others. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Yeah, this one is Comet. You can see uh, Comet. Okay. And then this is, this is for a veneer. And here you can, you can see some of the burst. That's the 8850, 12. So that's 0. 0.6 diameter, the 14, and the 16. Okay, but there are many other brands. Um, <clears throat> if you if you want more references, we can talk about this later. Um, these are the bars you should use. So what I'm going to do in this case, because I don't have a lot to prep, I'm going to get the 16. Yeah, the 16. Yeah, fine grit. And using a multiplier. So if you don't know what a multiplier is, here here is one. Yeah, this is the... It's a contra angle that can replace the, the turbine. This is one of my favorites. It is, of course, from the dense pipe because you know they're sponsoring uh, this webinar, and it is the one that I use anyway. So um, but this is the multiplier, and why I think it's important, this contra angle, because it gives you a lot of torque. And Jay, sometimes um, I even uh, can prepare the tooth without water. Uh, using very, very uh, low uh, rotation like this. Okay, so very gently like this uh, with the air stream for, for finishing the prep, I sometimes don't even use water. But of course, I'm, I'm using very, very uh, slow speed and a light, light touch. Yeah? But the idea then is now we're gonna prepare uh, the tooth, okay? Um, we have we should be protecting these walls i i have here somewhere the the wedge guard the wedge uh, the wedge shield right from paladins what's the name michelle I, I, it's escaping me the wedge shield i think to to protect uh, the animal the from protect, the neighboring uh, from uh, the Paladin system, what's the name? It escapes me now. Yeah, it escapes me too. What is the wedge shield? I mean, where is it? Uh... I'll, I'll show you one very, very short. But if you don't have that, you can use just uh, the Paladin 360 is a, a very nice uh, system. That can you help you also with this uh, with these things? Okay, but again, I'm not going to get too much into preparation. I'm I'm going to just really 
uh, focus on the on the idea. Yeah, so you should be using things like this. This is the Paladin 360. Uh, it's a very inter interesting uh, circular matrix system. So you could even up have applied uh, SDR like, like this, right? Okay. So let me keep going and show you the premolar because in the premolar, I want to use a slightly different approach. Let's say that in this case, this is a aesthetic area, yeah? So this is an aesthetic area and you say, well, I need to do a, a build up, you know, a core build up, but I want it to be very aesthetic. Um, I want it to be very aesthetic because um, I don't want to use, um, for instance, I don't want to use um, SDR that is sometimes a little more transparent because it is a core build up material, right? And then um, in these cases, I think you should use a flowable. And here are a flowable that I like to use. A3.5 gives you a lot of chromat chromaticity internally. Yeah. So this is part of the family of composites from Densply, the Spectra ST flow. Um, and in this case, then we're going to do the immediate dentinal ceiling yeah? with the flowable, but here the difference is that when you're applying the flowable, you really need to keep this in a thin layer. So what I'm gonna do is, we, um, if you guys feel are more comfortable, we can apply here the, the Paladin 360. Okay, so just to be more accurate, right? There you go. This is the matrix. We could probably put a wedge here as well. Uh, then we would do the adhesive application. Okay. I think I, I already applied the adhesive here, didn't I? So you already know the drill. If this is total wedge, you have to massage everything for 20 seconds. If this is uh, the selective etching, then you just massage the dentin that you did not etch. Okay, this is the idea. But you still need to respect those 20 seconds. Then you use a dry micro brush or a paper point. Uh, you remove the excess. A dry micro brush or a paper point. And if you have any comments, like did you like the idea of using the micro brush, you know, as a uh, paper point to remove the adhesive excess. Now we're going to dry this for uh, 10 seconds. I said 10 seconds because I do 10 seconds, but you know, as I told you, if you're, if you do five seconds, uh, good on you. I mean, you already improved the quality of your adhesive technique uh, tenfold, you know, you're going to get much more much more reliable and reproducible results. So now we're gonna cure this for 10 seconds. Okay. Um, so I'm sure how much more time do we have? We wanna finish at, at four? Yeah, four is uh, fine. Perfect. We're great, we're doing great. So my friends, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna seal the dentin before before I prep the tooth, yeah, with the flowable. So it's amazing material because you have all these different shades. Um, you have a, a, a larger variety of shades to pick from. You have even dentin, you have even dentin, sh uh, uh, dentin shades that you can choose from. Let me see if I have one here. I do, I do. So let's say you need to opacify a little bit the prep. Uh, you, you even have these, these effect shades um, that you can opacify the tooth with. Actually, why don't we use a little bit? So this is the Spectra Flow D, D1. Okay. So this D1 is more for the A1 and A2 shades, but I could certainly apply here. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the outside with the A2 on the gingival margins. And then I'm going to do all the dentin and seal the dentin with the flowable layer of the dentin shape. Okay, so we go very slow here. And what we can do here is the same, very similar uh, to what we did with, uh, with SDR. We brush from the flowable to the tooth. So don't go back and forth, otherwise you're gonna um, incorporate air bubbles, okay? But I show you how you do it. You come here and you grab the flowable and you brush it around. So the flow has to be in a much thinner layer, okay? And then if you have, if you want to apply a little more and opacify, this is the D1 shade. You can see it's much more, uh, it's much more opaque because it's a dentin shade, okay? And now I'm going to spread it around here. Let me get a, a new micro brush. And then you let it self-level a little bit. And there you go. A little more on this area. Okay. As long as you don't go, you don't brush it back and forth, you should be fine. All right, so this is the seal. You can see how it self levels. So in this case, because it's a very thin layer, so you should kind of start the prep, seal the dent, and, and then just finish the prep. Yeah. So you kind of pre-prep, seal, finish the prep. So a good example is you would prep with the uh, medium grid burrs. Yeah, with the medium grid burrs, this this one's here, this and or this, that's the 14, that's the 16. And then you would finish with the fine grid burrs in slow speed with high torque, okay? Too much water. Let me just cut the water so you can see what I'm doing. But here I would finish the, especially the enamel. Very well, okay. And then of course, wash, wash everything. And after this, you would check for the quality of your prep. You would check and um, proceed for scanning, scanning and milling. So easy as pie. All right, now I think unless we have questions, we can start talking a little bit about cementation. There are still no questions, Walter. I'm so thorough. I'm so thorough. You know, it's the art of explaining everything. <laughs> anyway, my friends. Correct. Uh, anyway, so let's do a quick cementation. Again, I need a few seconds just to change script here. And I wanna I wanna show two different ways of doing um, a cementation. Just give me one second. And then I wanna finish talking about core build up with a dual cure cementation. Okay, so th th that's the the plan.
is a poor patient, lost his tooth. So we're gonna do a cementation of a, a veneer, okay? And we're gonna simulate that we did the immediate dentinal sealing and how we should we would proceed for this um, for this cementation. Of course, you have to make sure the system is compatible with the resin uh, cementation system. Yeah. And you should know which type of adhesive um, is compatible with this with this cementation system. Um, in this case here, we're gonna use uh, Calibra and the adhesive is gonna be prime bond NP. And if you read prime bond active, sorry, prime bond active. And if you read the instructions, what it says there is that you should pre-cure the adhesive because this provides you a very thin adhesive layer. So you can pre-cure the adhesive. Very well. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna create a, an isolation area using uh, Teflon tape, okay? Then we're gonna etch all the enamel and the composite. Remember that this prep was done um, on top of the immediate dentinal ceiling. So there's no dentin exposed. And I wanna show you how practical uh, it is to do this type of, um, of cementation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the provisional, yeah, if any, then we're gonna sandblast this, okay? Sandblast the, the veneer. We're gonna apply the adhesive the same way I showed you before. We're gonna air thin it, dry it properly, but we're gonna pre-cure the adhesive on this area. And this is a technique that is becoming much and more pop much popular nowadays. Most systems are recommending that we pre-cure the adhesive. Why? Because you have much higher bone strength. Yeah? They're not stupid. Yeah? So, and what's happening is that with the technique that I showed you, you can ensure that you have no excess that will prevent the fit of the veneer into the preparation. Is that clear? So the technique for adhesive application that I showed you, it's very good for a midident no ceiling, but it's also amazing for the cementation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna etch, um, let me send blast this just for illustration. I have this new sand blaster uh, with water, which is really cool. Let me see if it works. So you remove the provisional, you sandblast all the composite. Of course, you would have to put uh, rubber dam or at least cords in these areas to avoid uh, bleeding, right? There you go. Okay. Now we would also, we would also sandblast the veneer. I think also, even if you're, uh, zirconia, we're blast blasting, uh, sand blasting as well, right? Are you guys sand blasting zirconia? Let me know in the chat. But definitely for lithium disilicate and, and uh, all, all ceramic um, veneers, you would have to sand blast this. Now, of course, you would ha have to rinse and, and dry everything and then One example of why this is the way to go and seal the dentin. Here, if I wanna over dry, it's not really a, a big deal. You can over dry it. Uh, 
Okay, so next step. Is this on in focus? Let me know if it's not. Yes, it is. Okay. So now, don't forget, you should isolate the proximal teeth. Yeah. Um, then we're gonna etch everything, etch the enamel, etch the co the the composite core because this is a composite core yeah, that was done and prepped. Um, a very thin one, but still composite core. Now we we want to apply the adhesive and keep it uniform in a thin layer. So here's where I think the technique that I showed you is really useful. Also, it's also useful, man. Right? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the adhesive. Yeah. All around. And now I'm gonna make sure um, it's enamel. So we, we still, we don't need to massage or anything. And it's, everything is etched, right? And this is, comp and this is composite, right? the, the dentinal sealing that was done. So what's gonna happen is you can apply, make sure you spread all over and immediately start removing the excess because this is just etched enamel and composite. If it is dented, then you need to um, observe those 20 seconds. So now you come, especially in the corners, yeah, and remove the excess. And in cases like this, if you need, you, you, you need to buy a small micro brush, okay? And of course, uh, you're going to need to use rubber dam or um, uh, retraction cord. Yeah? So since you have the, you remove the excess, now you can air dry this a little more forcibly. Okay. And sometimes if you got any excess of adhesive, then you're going to need to um, use a dental floss to make sure you have no excess, especially in cases in this new modern veneer preps where we don't open the contact, you have to kind of like this and like this, make sure you have no excess of these, okay? Very well. Okay. If at this point you see any irregular spots or anything, you get the same microburst that you used before and you touch a little bit with another without, without um, adding more adhesive, right? Just with the resin that is, it's already, it's already on the micro brush. Okay, at this point, uh, you have a perfect adhesive application. You can light cure this for 10 seconds in the front, 10 seconds on the back. At the same time you're doing this, your assistant can be applying the adhesive on the veneer or you can have already applied this on the veneer. And on the veneer, you don't need to you don't need to pre-cure the adhesive. You don't pre-cure it because you you can cure it through the veneer or through the crown. Yeah, I think up to two millimeters of thickness, up to four millimeters of thickness, you can cure through the the ceramic crown. So very well. But you need to dry the adhesive. Don't forget that these adhesives they contain water. So in this case, I will dry it for six, seven seconds. Right? Okay. All right, now we can cement this. You can cement this, especially in this case here, because there is no dentin involved. We can cement this with composite. We can cement this with Calibra. Uh, we can even cement this with the flowable composite, right? So I am going to use uh, the Calibra. You... Let me change your the tip. What you do is you put it here. Make sure you don't trap any air bubbles. And then I like myself, I like to put it a little dab on the tooth here 
because when I add the veneer, yeah, when I add the veneer to the tooth, the, it's the cement touching the cement. Look at this, the cement touching the cement. Very well. And now we start removing the excess and you can uh, wait for the final um, gel phase or you can tech cure this to your, to your preference. This is the direct cementation. Now, I also, I wanna run a little bit here. I wanna run a little bit. Right now, of course, you can, you need to use the dental floss and remove all the excess, okay? Now, I wanna run a little bit and show you the dual cure strategy because I didn't talk about that anymore. And Michelle, I think I, yeah, I'll be done in five minutes. So I'll be on time. Okay. No worries. No worries, all right. So if you want to do a dual cure application, Let's say you're doing a core buildup or a dentinal sealing, a, a, a mid dentinal sealing on an endodontically treated tooth, something like that. Okay. So let me, uh, I'll just use another model here. Let me see if I have a model XL. We're gonna a new tooth then. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Corex Flow, uh, which is a core buildup that can be doubled as a cement. So this is Corex flow. And this Corex flow can be used together with the act with the adhesive and the activator. Okay. So I always recommend when you're doing core buildup that you use it in dual cure mode. So this you have the self-cure activator, prime bone active, and corex flow. When you're using Calibra or a regular resin cement, you have to pre-cure the adhesive. You understand? Sorry, when you're using Calibra, a re resin cement, you use only prion bone active and you have to pre-cure the, the prion bone active before you cement. But if you're using Corex Flow, then which is a dual cure yeah, cement, um, what you what you need to you what you can do is you can mix prion bone active with the self-cure activator. Yeah, and then you don't need to pre-cure the adhesive. Imagine a post cementation, for instance, or, or a large core buildup, you know, and things like that. Um, so for cementation of crowns and, and veneers and things like that, it, this is not really applicable because Corex Flow is a core buildup cement, but for the cementation of posts, like you can see here, it's a dual cure buildup material and cementation of endodontic posts, it's ideal. So I'm just gonna do a demonstration. I don't have a post here that I can show you. And we're running out of time anyway, but when the last look. Yeah, I didn't plan for posts today, I'm sorry. One last look, no. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put another tooth here, okay? And we're gonna we're gonna simulate um, a very deep cavity. And we're gonna apply then core buildup material in dual cure mode, just as an example, okay? Let's let's just imagine this was uh, in in the don't agree tricky to it, okay?
So this is the scenario. It's an endodontically treated tooth. The endodontist already sealed the canals. And we're, we want to do a core buildup using a dual cure mode because then we don't need to light cure the core buildup material. And if we don't light cure the core buildup material, then we have a much better adhesion because you know that dual cure adhesion is not as strong as uh, uh, chemical cure adhesion, yeah? which is not as strong as light cure adhesion. Right? So there you go. So whenever you can let a cement self-cure, it's better than light cure than doing dual cure because self-cure is higher than dual cure, okay? So self-cure is higher than dual cure and light, pure light cure, uh, pure light cure is higher than dual cure. Is that, is that correct? Do it, does it make sense? Yeah? So the best one is direct light cure as when you do uh, a medial dentinal sealing with SDR, yeah? That's the best one. The second one is when you do a dual cure system in self-cure mode, which is what we're gonna do now. And then the third one is dual cure when you light cure the cement, okay? So now we're gonna get a clicks dish here. And we're gonna mix the adhesive in the self-cure activator in equal parts. The self-cure activator kind of activate the adhesive, yeah? So equal parts, one drop of each. It activates the adhesive so the adhesive can cure together, uh, together with the cement. This is, what, this is what it does, okay? So you put one drop of each, you mix it for five seconds. This clicks dish is really good because now you can close it and you know this can hold up to 15 sec uh, 15 minutes sorry yeah now the same thing here we're going to etch the enamel we're going to etch the sclerotic dentin and the hypermineralized dentin and then we're going to rinse and dry without over drying don't etch the normal normal dentin okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply it normally as we did before. I always like to apply a massaging the non-etched dent and then I extend to the enamel, okay? So uh, I'm gonna prepare this afterwards. In cases like this, they require a lot of adhesive, you know, because, um, there's a lot of dentin, deep dentin with those large tubules that I showed you. So make sure you apply with excess. This is the way I like to do it. Apply with excess. And then after those 20 seconds, um, after those 20 seconds, we're going to remove the excess like I showed you. Dry it, like, uh, not, like, uh, not like cure it, <laughs> because this is exactly what I want to show you is this is, Completely dark cure mode. So here I'm removing the excess with the micro brush, showed you many times. You dry it. Now don't light cure it. That's the whole point of it. Don't light cure it. Yeah. We're gonna uh we're gonna get the just one second. Yeah, we're gonna get the um, correct flow. All right. And we're gonna apply here very, very close to the area. And you can spread. And this, my friends, especially imagine you could, you could even have cemented a post if you wanted. And this is going to cure in the next four minutes. Yeah, 
without any shrinkage stress. And if you want to tech cure this, this is the most beautiful thing. You do one second here, one second there, and tech cure this so it's, it's stable. Okay, look at this. It's stable, but it's not cured inside and you just let it self cure. So doing like that, you're gonna have much less shrinkage stress, much less sensitivity. Don't forget to do these things. Um, let us know in the future if you if you had problems with sensitivity and if this helped you. A very thorough and I would say uh, complete adhesive application, a thorough drying of the solvent, evaporation of the solvent, curing it with a good curing light and then sealing the dentin with SDR or a thin layer of flowable before you prep and scan. I hope this is going to help you with your digital dentistry. Uh, this is Walter Diaz. Uh, if you need anything from us, please talk to Michel Petitjean about this. He has my contact. It was a pleasure. I hope I see you next time. Thank you very much, Walter. Uh, we, we would like to thank you for attending uh, this webinar and thank you, Walter, for the presentation. Uh, we value your opinion, so we therefore would like to ask you to complete the evaluation form before leaving the webinar. You can find the link of the, uh, to the evaluation form in the chat. Um, this webinar has been recorded and the link will be sent to you within a few days. So we hope to see you again for one of our future webinars. For now, we wish you a nice afternoon 